request Dr. Pashankar to kindly grace the dais. It is my privilege to introduce to you our esteemed speaker for the session, Dr. Dinesh Pashankar, Associate Professor, Pediatric Gastroenterology, Yale University, USA. Sir is an MBBS graduate from BJ Medical College, Pune, with an MD in Pediatrics from Pune University. He has completed his fellowship training in Pediatric Gastroenterology at British Columbia's Children's Hospital, Canada, and has completed his MBA in Healthcare from Yale School of Management. He is the director of Yale Pediatric Inflammatory Bowel Disease Program and directs the Pediatric Gastroenterology Postdoctoral Fellowship Training Program at Yale. I request sir to kindly address the gathering. So I'm Dinesh Pashankar. I'm a uh, pediatric gastroenterologist from Yale University. And first, um, I want to thank uh, Sim Health organizers and Dr. Rajiv Rodekar for inviting me here to be with you. I know it's been a long day for all of you, and you've been hearing a lot about healthcare from different uh, brilliant speakers about different topics. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time, but I, what I want to do is I want to put a very broad um, sort of picture on this, sort of a view from 30,000 feet, and I'll try to put Indian healthcare into global context. So, because that, I think that's important because down the road when you see, slowly we're going to, as the India's economy is advancing, we're going to get on the in a global map, and then there's going to be a stark problem, which is going to be obvious about the healthcare expenditure, etc., which I'll show you. And then the Indian government and Indian health sector is going to move in that direction. So first, I want to talk to a little bit about healthcare in USA, the lessons that we can learn. Uh, in many ways, USA and India have quite a few similarities and quite a few differences, and I'll point them out. Then I'll talk about the healthcare in India, the current status and future trends, where it's going to go. And some of the slides and some of the uh, points have already been made today, but I'll try to summarize them in a sort of uh, concise manner. And then I'll talk about the rising need for healthcare management professionals and, all, and the opportunities. A little bit about my journey, how I started. I'm actually from Pune. I did uh, uh, my medical school and college and pediatric residency here in Pune. And then I went to United Kingdom I worked in England and Scotland uh, for four, four years and got an experience of national health scheme. And then I, I, did a, I went to Vancouver, Canada. I did pediatric gastroenterology fellowship. Uh, also got a sort of a feel of Canadian health system, which is mixed between the UK and US. And then I came to the United States and worked in Midwest at University of Iowa for four years. And now I'm at Yale University. It's a very reputed uh, institute. Uh, it's between New York and Boston on the East Coast, and I've been working there for the last uh, few years. So I'm a pediatric gastroenterologist. So what that means is I take care of kids with stomach, intestinal, and liver problems, sort of very super specialization. I uh, have MBA in healthcare at uh, Yale School of Management, uh, which is another very reputed world-class institute. And besides seeing <clears throat> patients and doing clinical practice, I also help uh, uh, planning healthcare operations in our uh, institute, doing quality improvement, process improvement, etc. And uh, the second thing I do is uh, clinical optimization. So we review different practices uh, within our Yale medicine group, like nephrology, urology, cardiology, whatever. And we suggest, we act as a consultant and we suggest and recommend changes to improve patient flow, patient experience, patient engagement, and also at the same time improve physician efficiency. Uh, so uh, talking about United States healthcare uh, sector, it's a very large sector of Uni United States economy. Its uh, value is around $4 trillion, which is almost little more than India's whole GDP. So you can see how big that sector is. When we talk of healthcare, as you all know, it's not just doctor and patient. <clears throat> it obviously has facilities like hospitals, clinics, nursing homes, etc., but also includes imaging facilities like labs and uh, diagnostic imaging like X-ray, CT, MRI, etc. 
The second big bucket is drugs and devices, uh, where your pharmaceutical companies and devices manufacturers, uh, which also um, are the part of healthcare. The third big part is the payers, which is much less in India, but very big part of the healthcare system in the United States, where you have private insurance and also the government, which has, <coughs> sorry, which has Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, which act as a very big player uh, in the United States. And a lot of personnel, a lot of physicians and nurses, and along with that, a lot of healthcare management prof uh, professionals, people who have done uh, healthcare management MBA or MHA or different kind of uh, degrees in hospital or uh, business uh, administration. It's a big employer. There are 16 million people employed by United States Healthcare. That's almost one in eight Americans. So just to put this in perspective, and when we compare this with Indian healthcare, you'll see some stark differences. And some of them even allowable by the size of economy are pretty obvious. So this shows the health, uh, health expenditure per capita from OECD countries. OECD is Organization for Economic Development and Cooperation. So these are some developed countries around 35 of them, uh, mostly European countries, North America, um, some from South America, India is not one of them. But the point to look here is the healthcare expenditure. In United States, there's a $9,000 per head uh, health expenditure per year. And the blue one is a public uh, uh, part of it, and the pink one is a private one. So you can see United States is really an outlier here, which is not necessarily a good thing. Uh, compared to the others, the expenditure is much more, and this is sort of wide, uh, this is the average for this. So again, uh, I'm gonna put this into context with Indian healthcare soon. So United States, who pays for what? So private insurance is one third, Medicare and Medicaid, which is like a gov arm of a government agency which uh, gives the uh, insurance to the poor or people who are above 65 years of age. There are certain criteria that you have to meet to be satisfied for Medicare or Medicaid. And the other and the out of pocket is only 11%, which includes copay, deductible, and some cash payments. The expenditure where the money goes is most of them, as you would expect, is hospital care, 33%. Physician and clinical services, drugs, and others. Even this pie is extremely dif uh, different than the Indian pie that we will soon see. And this pie is slightly different. Again, how much is the health expenditure per uh, uh, as a share of GDP? That means how much the country is putting for the, their citizens' health care. Uh, United States, starting from 5% in 1960, is going around 17 to 18%. So this is the second biggest budget item on the United States budget after defense. So 18% of the dollar that United States has goes to the healthcare. Now coming back uh, to India, as you know, the different states sort of quite similar to United States where the healthcare is divided between central or federal and state. And we know in India also, at least on the government side, there's a state sponsored and the uh, central sponsored. So I'm just going to put on some your highlights. I'm not going to go into nitty gritty of this, just to highlight big points. So regarding Indian healthcare, I'm going to point about life expectancy, diseases and pairs and try to put into global context. This is an old slide, the life expectancy in India here, it shows 63, now it's more like 68 or 69. But I picked up these slides because it puts us into global context with comparison. So as you can see, Japan and US have much higher life expectancy, but even countries like Thailand, Brazil, Malaysia, which are economically much less stronger than us, much less uh, resources, but still has better life expectancy. So this is how we started with this, and we are going to get much better than that. And I'll show you that next slide. So another interesting thing that's happened in India is India has 17% of world population, but 21% of global disease. When I was in training at Sassoon General Hospital, uh, who are from Pune might know, uh, we used to see a lot of children and a lot of adults with infections and communicable diseases. And that was a major cause of death or disease or mor uh, mor morbidity and mortality. 
and over time it has gone down and to, at 2005 the switch happened where the communicable diseases went down and the chronic diseases went up and i'm going to show you what are the sort of causes for that and what uh, how it has huge healthcare implications for the healthcare sector as a whole uh, so who pays for healthcare so let's start from the left side in UK and Germany, or almost all Western European countries, it's the government which pays. The yellow bar is state and local government. So the chunk of it is paid by the government here, or pu public expenditure. As you move to US, it seems a little more balanced. There's a, uh, there's a, uh, there's a government insurance, there's a private insurance, and there's some individual. But as you look at the left, in India, 71%, and sometimes, uh, some studies show even higher percentage of people paying out of pocket or individual. And you have heard those uh, numbers today in different contexts. So obviously this is not good. We don't know what is exactly good or perfect, but you can't be so much outlier. And we do need to move somewhere in the right uh, direction. Uh, so where does the money go? Uh, when the uh, people are spending from uh, out of pocket expenditure, mostly in medicines, a lot of in hospitals, diagnostic labs, transportation, government hospitals, etc. So now I, I just explained to you the current status of India, trying to put into global healthcare, and you have obviously appreciated that there's a lot of differences. And India, while rising very rapidly and becoming sort of, uh, it'll probably soon become third or fourth. Uh, in the GDP uh, numbers uh, regarding the uh, size of the economy because it's already $3 trillion economy, it's rising fast, but we are lagging behind in healthcare big time. So when Gretzky, who's an ice hockey player, uh, he's famously said that uh, I skate to where the puck is going to be. Puck is like a hockey ball. Uh, you want to go where the puck is going to be, not where it has been. So for all the people who are in the training or something, you want to go where the things are happening, not the where they are happening now, but in the future. So there are future trends in healthcare, and some of the slides or some of the points have already been made. Some have already been made in the uh, in today, and one of them has been the market demand. So there's going to be more healthcare demand. So there's going to be more healthcare demand, and that's going to be driven by population or life expectancy. So the population of India is rising, and as you all know, that means there are going to be more customers, period. The second thing that's been happening is there's also going to be a rising in life expectancy. Oh, there it is. Can you just enlarge that, please? Are you going to move forward? So there are going to be increase in customer size. It's because of rise in the population, rise in life expectancy, and they're going to also going to be a different type of diseases. So as I showed you, the infectious disease went down, but the chronic diseases came up. And that has huge healthcare implications because chronic diseases like diabetes, blood pressure, coronary heart disease, they require multiple visits to the doctor. They require multiple imaging testing. They require multiple uh, hospitalizations. And that increases the demand for healthcare. And so there's a big cause that there's going to be increase in market demand. Uh, I can do it. Can I? Yeah, so there's a growing demands for healthcare and rise in population and health awareness, rise in lifestyle diseases and medical tourism. So here it shows the life expectancy from 2006 to 2016, rising from 64 to 68. So Indian healthcare is adding three to four months for every Indian citizen per year. So we are slowly, our lifestyle is increasing. That means there are going to be more people, more elderly people who are going to need more healthcare, and that's going to create more demand. So overall, this is going to increase in market size. I already made a point about chronic diseases like coronary heart disease, diabetes, asthma, obesity, and cancer. These are rising and they disproportionately 
chronic diseases actually disproportionately demand more health care than the other uh, type of diseases. Medical tourism, again, a uh, few points were made earlier in the day. Uh, I think we are doctors and nurses are absolutely excellent, but um, uh, in par with the Western countries, in fact, I would say even better than them, sometimes regarding some surgical skills. Uh, we speak English, which has been great uh, for, uh, for all over the world, so we can uh, uh, attract the patients. And the costs are very low. For example, knee replacement would be done in 5 to 10% of the cost that is required in the USA. So all that, it, met, uh, it attracts medical uh, tourism destination as uh, India. Presently, it's a small market because given the India's population, um, we still have the Indian healthcare market has to satisfy Indian needs. But it is definitely a niche market and it's growing very fast. And the second point I want to make about the future trends in healthcare is rise in affordability or rise in paying capacity. Uh, because as you know, the prosperity is rising in India. There's going to be proportionate rising in healthcare expenditure and some government initiatives. So this study uh, looked at status of Indian household at 2010 and 2021. So they divided India's population in different socioeconomic class like low class, depending on their annual income, low class, emerging middle, middle, upper middle, and the upper class. And this is the data for 2010. As you can see, the projection, and they have been literally following that, is that the low class is actually going to disappear. There's going to be this decrease in size, I should say. There's going to be upward mobility in class where the emerging middle and middle and everything is going up, which is a great thing. So Indians are getting more prosperous, their annual uh, household income is rising. And secondly, they also track Indian household expenditure distribution. Where do Indians spend money? So common things, food, transport, housing, etc. And presently in 2010, actually no, I shouldn't say presently, they're spending 4.8% and they estimate that the rise in uh, health expenditure will increase to 7.5%. That means you are, the Indian people are having more money and they're going to spend more money on the healthcare. So obviously the paying capacity of Indian people is going to rise. Now coming back to again, the putting the uh, India on the global context, we have seen again this, that United States uh, spends a lot of money on its citizens while Indians, uh, India, this uh, healthcare expenditure as a percentage of GDP is much low, and particularly the public sector. And again, you have heard the uh, different in government initiatives, particularly the uh, Ayushman Bharat scheme, which is a very ambitious scheme, uh, quite similar to Affordable Care Act or Obamacare in the United States. And so the government has been stepping up, although it needs to do a lot more, but I think the pressure is on. in a, in the United States, healthcare becomes a very sensitive political issues and nobody would, you know, all the government or political parties would back it up big time. And I think soon that's going to happen in India too, or it's happening. So as a result, uh, Indian healthcare uh, is one of the fastest growing compared to even North, uh, North America or Western European countries. And again, you have seen something similar kind of graph that the projection is that healthcare expenditure is going to rise quite exponentially. So in summary, the future India, the expenditure is, uh, they say by 2022, it's uh, $372 billion. I apologize, most of these are foreign studies, so I don't have the numbers in rupees exactly. Particularly the hospital industry is going to rise quite a bit. They say up to 8.6 trillion rupees here. Uh, we talked about the number, there was a talk about number of doctors. We're going to need more doctors, more nurses. And again, it talks about the government initiative. So a lot of things are happening in the uh, healthcare sectors. And you, we, there are going to be a lot of jobs about this, not only for doctors, nurses, but obviously for healthcare uh, professionals in any form. So there are going to be opportunities left, right, and center. Where's the where is the most of the revenue? In India, it's mostly still in the hospital side, more than the clinics or the drugs or pharma 
but there's other dis other uh, factors like pharma and the devices and the diagnostics. Obviously, hospital management uh, has been talked quite a bit, and that's the obvious huge sector of the healthcare in India. Uh, there's an opportunity in both large and small. So many large hospitals like Apollo, Fortis, etc. They have corporate governance. They are run by run as corporations. They are a, a publicly traded company. So they have huge um, structure, which requires a lot of uh, uh, people in healthcare administration and management. But even in small hospitals, many small hospitals are just managed by physicians. And uh, physicians' time is very valuable. And they should do best what they should do what they're at best, like treating the patients um, rather than taking time in management. So even in small hospitals, there are a lot of roles about HR, accounting, billing, cleaning, etc., or supplies, etc. So there's definitely need for those kind of people who have knowledge of healthcare and the management skills. Hospitals, you have heard many talks about, uh, we just had a nice talk about HR, accounting, billing. Soon the insurance is coming in, the government initiatives are coming in. So we need somebody in the accounting or billing department who knows about all this uh, new initiative, who can work with the patients uh, to maximize their potential of payment. Public relations, operations. Um, in many hospitals in US or in India, there is always a, ma a manager for wards or the operating room or the diagnostics uh, testing who will take care of the all the administrative part and the doctors will come and just do the, the directly patient care. Or marketing, and there are a lot of projects, you know, uh, for example, in our hospital, we do projects. There's always a project manager who's usually MBA and my own experience is that there are some managers who really take effort to understand the healthcare, understand diseases. They ask patients and working with them makes so much easier for physicians. And then there are some project manager who just stick to the management skills and not, uh, not put too much healthcare. I think my advice would be that if you are working in healthcare management, you really need to learn more about healthcare um, and try it. You don't, nobody expects you to be a physician, but if you have that knowledge, you have um, a really extra upper hand. There are many other opportunities besides the hospital, um, large multidisciplinary clinics. In fact, at least from United States model, every uh, clinic or what we call is more like office, they have an office manager who will take care of um, appointments, accounting, billing, etc. Uh, pharmaceutical, clinical research, device company or pharmaceutical companies are absolutely doing great. They have, because of the regulation, they can make some generic molecules and they are even exporting outside. So their, their growth is quite exponential and there are opportunities there too. Similarly, diagnostics or lab imaging facilities. Again, the knowledge of healthcare and the administrative skills are extremely helpful. The government sector, as we showed, uh, is actually exploding. So you really need uh, people who have knowledge uh, to fulfill those positions. Healthcare IT is another uh, upcoming in the United States or most Western, Western countries. There's electronic medical record, and I know many hospitals here have it, but there's still, it's not reached everywhere. So people who do have IT background uh, and do have healthcare management would be uh, the right people to lead that. So growth in all sectors is expected to be 15 to 30%, which is quite uh, remarkable. Finally, I would say that if you want to do healthcare management training, you need to do obviously in reputed institutes. I've talked to some of the Symbiosis students. They do these real life projects, which are extremely, extremely important. So you get an idea. Uh, and uh, actually do a very academic uh, project out of it. I already stressed knowledge of healthcare. Many people feel uh, in healthcare management, when I work with our project managers, I sort of always try to teach them a little bit about healthcare because whenever you're dealing with the patient, I think it's important. You need to understand that part. Uh, the, more you, uh, the more you put in effort here, you will be much better off whenever you work in healthcare sector. You obviously need business administration skills. 
And there's some couple of unique aspects of health working in healthcare sector that I want to sort of stress. One of them is working hours. Um, some of our managers, as you know, the diseases don't stop. So some of them, our managers have duties in the evening, weekends, nights, etc. So you need to be cognizant of that. And finally, anybody who works in the healthcare, because at the end of the day, and maybe it's a cliche, maybe I'm old fashioned, it is about curing patient, it is about healing patient, it is about doctor patient, trust relationship. So anybody who works in healthcare se sector, wherever you are, you may be in accounting billing, you may be in the HR, you may be in the, uh, or even not even healthcare management profession, even the people who are in the cleaning, who are the, we, in our hospital or most US hospitals, people get trained to how to talk to the patient about with full empathy, devotion. And if you do that, I think there's that extra factor of work satisfaction. I think the healthcare is, sector is growing. So definitely there's an opportunity to do well, but there's also opportunity to do good. Um, and that's what I think I feel about uh, healthcare um, trends in India. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, sir, for giving such a wonderful insight on the topic. I would like to request Dr. Rajiv Yaravdekar, Dean, Faculty of Health and Biological Sciences, to kindly felicitate our esteemed guest.